G'day there. Do you have problems with animals eating your trees? Maybe fruit trees in particular, especially deer. Deer are such a nuisance to try and keep out because they can jump so high. But this brilliant deer repellent will keep them away from your trees and keep the damage to a bare minimum. It's known as bone sauce or some people know it as dipples oil. And make sure you follow the instructions at the end for applying it so you don't end up ruining, damaging or killing your fruit trees. This is not my recipe. It's one that's been made famous by the permaculture legend known as Sepp Holzer. And it is probably the stinkiest thing I have made in a really long time. And despite this being a really bizarre way of doing something, it actually really works. I was super surprised at the end result. And I'm even more surprised at how effective it actually is. At our new place, we have a lot of deer sign. There's deer tracks all over the place and talking to the contractor that did a lot of work at our place he's local and he has done a lot of hunting especially deer hunting and pig hunting through our block when it was pine forest and covered in trees it's currently winter here and we have great plans that before summertime preferably sooner rather than later we've got a whole lot of fruit trees that we want to put in and we don't have the money to put in deer fencing to deer fence our perimeter we were looking at probably 50 to 60 thousand dollars which is money we just don't have so i started looking for other options to protect our plants from deer we use this as a bit of an experiment for the kids to do and it's worked out really well they had a grand old time tending the fire and while it was cooking they also made themselves some pancakes what you're going to need is a whole big bunch of bones these bones can be ones you've already cooked and eaten or they can be fresh ones we've used a combination we've got some goat bones from a goat that we had to put down we also have some chicken bones and pork bones a whole selection of things in there some of them we'd eaten and some of them we hadn't and while we were saving them up we just had them in a bread bag in the freezer and just kept adding to them you're gonna need two pots that are fire safe cast iron is ideal but you could use something else that you know is going to handle the heat We've got these two cast iron trivet pots and so we use those. Then you're going to need a piece of netting, either some welded wire or some chicken wire, something that's made of metal that will fit across the top of the pots to stop the bones falling from the top pot into the bottom pot. Then you're going to need somewhere safe that you can light this fire and it's always best to check with the rules around where you are. You don't want to be responsible for a massive forest fire, just trying to make some bone sauce to protect some trees. It seems a little bit of a silly choice. We also have this perfect place here that's all in clay that we can often set up a wee campfire for the kids to cook their lunch on and then you're going to need some clay or some dirt that you can mix with water and make a decent mud with that you're going to use to seal the pots together you're going to need enough firewood to burn a fire for at least four hours some matches obviously some way of starting your fire and at the end you're going to need a funnel a sieve and a jar or a bottle something that you can put them into and to use it you're going to need a paintbrush so we've dug a hole for the first pot to go down into. You want it to fit nice and snugly in there, not to have too much air gap. And then you pack the other pot full of your bones as firmly as you can and put the netting over the top and kind of tuck it around the sides. This is to keep the bones in that pot. So when you invert them together, hopefully they stay in the top one. Before you invert them together, add about half a cup of water into the bottom pot and that just helps dissolve some of the minerals and stuff out of the bones. Once your two pots are inverted together, then you're going to need to get yourself some nice wet clay and seal really firmly between them. Hopefully about an inch top and bottom of the seal so that you've got a nice good firm seal around. The idea is to stop the air getting in and out. You want that to become a non-oxygen environment. And then all you need to do is pile up your wood and light a fire keep it going for at least two hours ideally four hours or longer and then once those coals have burnt down throw some dirt over the top to help seal that heat in and let the bones continue to cook after 24 hours come back and take all that dirt off and very carefully pry the top pot off the bottom pot and if you're anything like me the clay that we had around the sides fell in which is why we've had to sieve it when we put it into a bottle in the bottom of your pot you should have a sludge it will be varying consistencies and colors depending on what types of bones you've used how hot your fire got and how long it cooked for it can vary from a runny light sort of brownish color like what we've got well it's not really light brown a chocolatey brown all the way through to a very thick black tar any of those are perfectly usable and if your tar is too thick to brush on you can cut it 50 50 with either some oil 
or some sheep tallow, goat tallow, beef tallow, something that you can cut it with up to 50-50 and it will still work just as well. This has been described as a destructive distillation of bones and boy golly does it smell bad. Don't get it on your skin, it lingers for ages and it works really well to deter herbivores. It's not going to work quite so well for omnivores so if you've got problems with rats or pigs it may not work as well but it will definitely repel uh, cattle and deer and sheep and it works quite well for rabbits as well. Now when you are applying it be sure to wear gloves you do not want this stuff on your clothes or on your hands and the trick is to apply it in the dormant season. You do not want this stuff to go on your leaf buds or on your leaves. It is really high in nutrients and really high in minerals and it will burn those tender growths. So be sure to apply it in the dormant season over winter time. And honestly, that's usually when the deer are out looking for food anyway. Its effectiveness will depend on the amount of deer pressure you have and how hungry they are. If you have really high deer pressure and really hungry deer, you're going to have to apply it not just to the trunk, but to as many branches as you can. If the deer pressure is less, you can get away with just applying it to the trunks. Some people also just apply it to stakes and put them around the perimeter of their places where they've got trees growing. The stuff soaks into the wood, so it should last a good 6 to 12 months. Billy from Permaculture Farms, he says that he has painted it on and has lasted for years. I guess your results may vary, but one bottle of this is going to do a lot of trees for a long time. Which is really good to know because making it is quite stinky. With the remaining bones that are in the pots, don't throw those out. Crush them up and throw them through your compost. They work brilliantly as a biochar. Do you need some more fruit trees for your orchard? Check out this video here on how to graft your own fruit trees the really easy way. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.